is castor mass and I'm going to show you how to use the tail thread to easily make an exploding rod on uh, the edge of this tetra so that you can continue so that you can continue uh, with the beadwork and trim off the thread and have it open and close thanks to only the the back edge this is, will be these beads here the green ones will be the hinge and what I'm going to add now onto these two edges will be open so what I did is with the working thread the working thread is here I added this edge already without corners because the corners need to remain free from the hinge if you include corners to a hinge it won't move well so what I do is I have this tail thread here it is already really well uh, stuck in the beadwork so that I, I could trim it off right now here but what I'm going to do is use it as if it was a working thread just for a temporary join so here we are starting with one corner and then we add green dedicas to this edge and also the next one. I'm going to do this now and we'll be back in a second. So here I am back with my little tetra. As you can see, I've added beads to the entire edge. And now I'm going to add the last black bead for the corner. And instead of continuing with this tail thread now, I'm going to pass it through one of these beads on the side here two or three times so that it remains well in place. And I take off the needle from the thread and I continue beading with my working thread now all around. In this case, I'm going to make the decreases to make the exact opposite size of this shape. And I will show you later how to have this shape open and close easily. This is my finished piece. Little love bunny. With thanks to Sia Nolan for the adorable little doll face. It's adorable. I love it. Um, the tail thread here has been passed through these beads several times so that it is a little pull, practical. I didn't make a pointed end but a bottom so that this lovely little doll can simply stand on a shelf if, if it's if desired. I added a size 8 seed bead at the top which can be added to a jump ring and the jump ring can be added to a, a key ring or whatever whatever you want to make with it and here you can see the tail thread that is still attached to the beadwork I wanted to show you what I'm going to do now you can either cut it off or take a thread burner and remove the thread like this so that it is not visible anymore right there's a little bit left over Voila. and pull this little bead and see what happens. 
ça marche pas. So, we need to help this thread a little bit, so to see. It did not work very well to pull the tail thread from where it was. I wanted to change two things to what I did before. One, make it easier to pull on the bead with the thread to open the little box. This is better if you give it as a gift. It should not be hard for the person to open it. And the second thing I wanted to do is to have this little little bead here that remains so that you can still close it once you open the little box so here's here's the new little system i added a pink pearl so that it can be distinguished from the bl from the white pearl and here we go let's see what happens when we pull on the thread and open the little box Ta -da! <laughs> so cute and inside of course you can write what you like Hello again. This diamond also has something inside. I made a temporary join here. You can see the tail thread still here in place. And I passed through this bead here. With a little loop so that it would be easier to pull on to, on it. Let's see if it works. Seems to come. Yes, it works. And there is what is inside the little box. A little perfume flask I quite like this shape it covers this perfume flask pretty pretty well now all I need to find is or to do actually is to add a little loop here to close it with a bead and transform it into a pendant I don't know if I would I try to attach chain to these two beads but it does not hang nicely so we'll see what we'll come up with doesn't hmm. funny thing I like perfume bottles. 